Hi, today it's June 6th and I finally feel recovered enough to be out and about. I have been out of commission mostly. I've been well enough to garden in the past two, three weeks, but I've been mostly quarantining in my house with COVID because I had a lingering cough for quite a bit. And I was also still testing positive even when I felt better. Uh, yesterday was the first day I went to the gym in a long time and today is I'm out trying to do the spring food forest tour for you long overdue lots of overgrown plants to show you um, but I'm gonna try to get it posted today and if I'm gonna do that I can't spend a lot of time editing it so I want to do this very fast I hope it's not too shaky for you. So I thought I would start by showing you what I see when I come down the stairs. This is behind my house. Right up against the house is a fire hazard so you're not supposed to have uh, wood chips come up to your house because uh, in the summertime a fire can jump along dry surface wood chips obviously it's moist underneath then it use your vegetation as a fire ladder to your house so it's not ideal but it's uh what i have the previous owners put the grapes up there and uh, i like having hanging grapes so my uh, fire plan is evacuation i don't own anything i really care about i suppose probably not true so up against the house is uh after that disclaimer uh, grapes there's three grapevines here also the previous owner had installed this wall and this wall it's the same wall and so the original garden um this used to be a fence here there's remnants of a fence i couldn't pull out so this was uh, an original garden bed and then this little tiny bed right here up against the house I'm just gonna walk around and quickly identify stuff. This is a marshmallow. There's uh, some babies nearby. So um, this makes babies and I move them around. So I haven't been uh, harvesting him because I've been using him as, uh, I've, and I've said this in previous videos, my initial plants are basically um, kind of like nursery plants for myself until they go crazy and weedy. And then I start eating <laughs> the weeds. So, um, this is a very old plant, right? You can see like it, it's probably got a ginormous root underneath there. I may not want two of them like that, taking up this space. So maybe that little guy next to it. So I'll just walk up and show you. And right away, I focus too much on one plant. See, there's a baby. So I figure, well, that guy will be one that I can harvest. And there's one in front the chicken coop that I actually have to move him because he's just growing in a wall. So most of the places I show you are probably going to have potatoes in them because I've planted potatoes at some point and left some in the ground. So I'll be saying potatoes a lot. <laughs> potatoes. Looks like a carrot I left in and it's going to flower. Um, in this area, uh, I typically put in starts. I don't manage them like these four beds right here, one, two, three, four, where I plant things by seed. So this is more of just like putting in starts and also perennial veggies and herbs. And so like there's a lemon, that lemon balm there jumped from that lemon balm. And uh, there's stra also a lot of places I point out, I'll see strawberries, there's lots of random varieties of strawberries. There's a Merriam berry that I thought I dug out, but he came back with the ventions. And all those white flowers are the Merriam berry. There's a Oxide Daisy. Ooh, what is that? Um, I know there's a bone set in there. There's one that I'm looking at that I can't, I don't remember. I put so many herbs in there. There's a lavender behind the lemon balm. There's a St. John's wort, hyssop. Oh, there's three rhubarbs in here. Uh, sweet Sicily, that's really pretty smelling. There's a dwarf raspberry that's spread. 
for some reason a bunch of daikons volunteered in this little spot and I've been putting that in salads. I've also got French sorrel everywhere. And of course I leave my dandelions in. There's a bloody dock. There's the volunteer brassicas. I don't want to talk too much about my starts unless I can get them bigger because it's going to be embarrassing if I don't harvest them. But um, I will mention my sweet meats. So I started those from seed. I put a bunch of poo around them. But you know what? The composted poo doesn't work as well as like fresh poo. And I think because of the wood chip composition, I think I can put direct chicken poo on my veggies without burning them. So we'll see. This channel is about experimenting, isn't it? Because when you don't do that, they look stunted. There are... This is my wood chip blend. So there's soil underneath, but um, wood chips on top. So it's very low nitrogen. In my last video, I blamed the weather for why these are stunted. I still think that, but I think right now they're stunted because of the lack of nitrogen. I've put some liquid fertilizer on it once. Uh, that's not enough. I got to keep doing that. I'm also going to bring some poo over here and uh, water it in. One of my projects has been plucking out wild lettuce because I don't want them in this spot competing with the seeds that I've sowed. And what's also interesting is that I've been seeing other plants volunteer that I'm not used to seeing volunteer so aggressively because of the high wood chip concentration. So here, since I, it's very, very low wood chip, even though it's, it's enough to deplete it of nitrogen, but not enough to deter weeds. So my fennel over there is now finally acting like a weed in this particular environment. And I did not plant any of these fennels, but you would think that I did. So let's just pretend that that was intentional. <laughs> and then this lemon balm has also gotten weedy in this low wood chip environment. So I've been plucking out these little lemon balms. It smells nice, but you can still see that there are wild lettuce in here. And so I'll wait for them to get a little bit bigger. So I'm sure that they are wild lettuce. I wouldn't be shocked if I was actually pulling out stuff that I seeded. I've actually been eating these. I've been making little salads with these, blending it with the, let the lettuce that I've planted, but I cannot eat them at this rate. There's just so many of them. They were getting too big and they were competing too heavily with the reduced nitrogen. So that's the status of this. So I'm not really doing a food forest tour, am I, by talking about these veggie beds, but I figured you might be curious about them. Maybe next time I'll just plant the red ones so um, I can identify the stuff that I've planted versus what's weedy better. And another way you can tell that it's a nitrogen deficiency because you'll see some pockets are bigger than others. And that just tells me that maybe more poo got in over here than over there. But those could be, those should be a lot bigger if I was dumping fertilizer on it. And so I'm not going to talk about the others as much because it's, I'm slipping on my <laughs> butt almost. Um, but it's the same kind of situation with these other beds. These ones were planted later. That's the one that I planted on camera. That one looks like it had more poo in it because it's a little bit bigger, but that's also in uh, the better soil. This one has more of the wild lettuce that I haven't weeded yet. So you can see what it looked like. All right, so I got to pluck these out, right? And then I can reveal the other stuff next to them. And you know, what's kind of funny is uh, the slugs have been going to town. It's been like perfect slug weather. And uh, if you don't give your plants a lot of nitrogen, they can't grow faster than the slug damage, or it's just harder for them to do that. And so you see more damage. 
But uh, what was kind of funny is as I was, I've been weeding these, I've been seeing that the slugs have been going in and out, avoiding the wild lettuce so that they can munch on my veggies in between them. <laughs> so like, what's an example of that? Maybe the obvious things have been mowed down. Also these like red Russians, I haven't, I didn't plant these either. This is part of the natural weed environment here. So it's not a weed if really if it's wanted. Yeah, see, I have to go in here and I have to, I think my last round or my first and last round of liquid fertilizer kind of uh, made these lettuces bigger. And so now they're more obvious to me and I'm having the urge to pluck them out. <laughs> while I'm trying to do a food forest tour. So I'm going to stop doing that. Uh, oh, here's an example. See this red Russian? I guess I didn't plant this either. But you see that leaf was chewed. But a lot of them look nice, right? Oh, here's one. Like, so this one looks like it's been damaged. Right? But none of the wild lettuce looks like that. Oh, and look, at here's one. See that one was munched. Basically, the plan for these beds is to have my experiment on the edge and starts kind of in the middle and pathways along the fence. One of my projects is uh, kind of getting so many buckets thrown out of here per day or per week. And I've been throwing them here because this is the first area I'm going to fully fabric for the bindweed. Here is what a salsify flower looks like. So this is going weedy. First my chicory went weedy, that's chicory. And now my salsify is successfully weedy for me. And you'll see these around the property now. And when these go to seed, it'll be just that much more. <laughs> and so here's one of those kales that's also growing like a weed. I'm not gonna go down this terrace. I'm just gonna stop here to show you this edge of that corner of the food forest. Just because it turns into a jungle. <laughs> I spent some time managing it up to this point. The rest of it is pretty much a nightmare unless I have a brush saw or clearing saw with me. And so I'm putting that on hold until I can buy one of those, hopefully this week or within a month. Look at the area outside the fence. It's all bracken ferns. I didn't get to those alkanets, thimbles, alders, stinging nettle, the hazelnut, big leaf maple, young enough to be sod. <laughs> but I planted stuff all behind that fence and it just, it can't compete. When you see all the stuff that I'm managing inside the fence, I just don't have time. I would if I had a brush saw, right? There's also, I don't know if you can see a Himalayan that jumped from that side of the fence and it landed on the side of the fence. I didn't have a tool with me to, to pop it out, but it just created this uh, like bridge. It's pretty funny. I did hand whack this, this uh, chicken run. I'm not using it as a chicken run, but it was supposed to be in theory a chicken run. So I've whacked it by hand. It actually wasn't that bad, but I can imagine how much faster and wonderful it'll be with a tool. So I'm going to do that with the rest of the property. So the property that I'm just going to point to and just show you is the part um, that is just too jungly. You won't even see anything but thimbles and black caps and alders and bracken ferns and thistles. So right there, that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> if I had done this video a couple months ago, you would have seen the plants that I planted a whole lot better. So I will just call them out. So, oh, I did plant a nine bark there. There are a couple figs here. There are a couple of pears down there. Uh, they're very weakened. It's just very, um, just say actually stunted because of the plants that grow up right next to it and, and compete with it. I haven't been managing it properly. So that is my fault. Another project, um, you're not gonna be able to see it, but this side of the slope that doesn't have the thimble, you can, I don't know if you can see the white flowers down there, that's the thimble. Um, I've been planting slope stabilizing kind of herbs in there, hoping that they'll run. So there's Kinnick Kinnick, Rosemary, Salad Burnet, uh, one strawberry, just to see how that will run. There's a black cohosh on the bottom. 
I just put in some pennyroyal. Also, there's sword ferns, as you might be able to tell, right here, close to me. Uh, there's a salmonberry, volunteer salmonberry. There's a currant that I put in there, salal, and of course, a thimble. I've been hand pulling the thimble that comes up. Uh, there is a bindweed that got itself in there. I will have some plastic probably in the new area that it's trying to spread into. This Nuka rose got crazy and I, another project is taking down the area that was over my pathway. So I let these Oso berries rub up against me because at least they're not uh, spiky. But you don't want these guys scratching you. Look how pretty those flowers are. I have a Ceanothus a hybrid down here. I love these flowers. I love the Ceanothus uh, well, trees, shrubs. You can make them look like trees. Anyway, I did plant one once and I think it got overrun. I'm not going to go back in here, but I actively had to manage in there too. I actually threw seeds in here too. Kind of wondering how they would do back in here. And that's why there are some lettuces that are making it. But in general, there's no sun really back here. Or it's being shaded by these grapes and salal and bracken fern. But usually I, I whack all that. This is all going to get whacked. There's no stinky bulbs. And there's this, t um, I keep calling it tea berry, um, cut leaf blackberry that keeps growing back. So this will probably all be fabric. While trying to preserve the salal and keeping the nuka rose just contained. I don't mind just taking out the runners of that guy. But I gotta do something with this brush. Also, um, I'm thinking the point of this video is so you can get a feeling for the projects that I do every day. And I'm always jumping from one project to another, right? Like uh, you saw me see the, the um, wild lettuce, so I was trying to pluck it, so that could distract me when I'm trying to lay fabric. So I never quite finish a job because I'm always going, oh, I need to do that, I need to do that, I need to do that. And uh, I started putting on this fabric because of this guy and uh, got distracted. Although um, partially because I decided to remove the brush that I put there because it wasn't fun putting fabric over it. So I still need to finish that. And uh, in, in the meantime, see the bindweed is coming back up. I got a weed along here. I might use fabric there. And these are luscious weeds that have been getting chicken poo kind of rained in on them. So this is, so there's chicken poo that comes through here. And so this is why I know my veggies could be bigger if they were just fertilized properly. And uh, this is behind the chicken coop. And so there will be fabric that kind of comes up to here and wrapped around these plants. That's gonna be a challenge. I'm not looking forward to it. The bindweed used to be really bad on the flat or this terrace area, but I have managed it enough that I think I can hand weed, continue to hand weed here. Well, then I continue to put fabric here and up on this slope. And you can see this, like how do I, you know, like how do I put fabric around these sword ferns and it's just, uh, yeah, and uh, there's bindweed on the side of the coop, so that's gonna have fabric. And uh, you can see how it comes here. So this is all gonna have fabric. I take out cat's ears, even though I leave dandelions. Here's another ginormous sorrel. There's an apple, aronia. All my strawberry trees are dying, and 
not sure why. There is a bindweed climbing this current over there. There is a rosemary. I planted all these snowberries. I might regret that one day. There are honeyberries in there. That's one. There's a chive behind it. I think my jujubes are dead, but they always leaf out late. I think it's, uh, there's too much stuff growing next to them. Ew, I usually take out my uh, foxgloves. They kind of look like alka nuts, but they got, oops, I didn't get the root out. I don't want little foxgloves coming up everywhere. Hmm, that's interesting, I'm gonna leave it there. And I got quack grass in here, so that I got a pole. And this is all going to have fabric on it because there's bindweed that got in here. This is my biggest nightmare. Once upon a time, this used to be a greenhouse. It burned down. Not my fault. But you can see that stump caught on fire. And all of these plants burned down. This is all dirt. There's a red flowering current that used to be really massive and uh, it's just really small right now. And uh, I wish I used that opportunity to put fabric on it and I didn't. And uh, I really love the Salal. I wish this could just be Salal. I'm gonna feel bad if I have to kill the Salal. I would preserve the Salal and that red huckleberry that's around that stump. But everything else um, will very likely be whacked and fabriced because of this nightmare weed that is all throughout here. See? Then I just, I'm not gonna spend the rest of my life finding these out. I think the salal is gonna have to be a casualty and I'm um, hoping to preserve at least the ferns. Like I said, the, the salal that's around the stump Look at that. That is so like that. I need to take a picture of that. That's my life. The thimble growing right up to the jujube, the bindweed wrapping all the way up that jujube. Like this, this isn't your home. This is my home. Bye bye. <laughs> like, there you go. Um, yeah, that's I. <laughs> this is very much inspiring me to get my saw and to come up here and destroy everything. It's better than the fire because I thought about setting this place ablaze because of that bindweed. The previous owner planted these poppies and iris and uh, I planted the roses, the gooseberry, this perennial sunflower. There is bindweed in here but it's weakened from me. Um, coming in here and hand pulling it. I got some brassicas growing up like weeds. This is a good example of a black cap that doesn't that looks really ratty when it's growing in full sun. You really want to grow berries in a guild in shade mostly. This is an evergreen a huckleberry it's, that's gonna probably take forever to fruit. They're notoriously slow growing. Here's another kind of native strawberry. This is like a I was doing like a prairie thing here, prairie theme. So there's another type of native strawberry that you see in the prairies. So it's a Virginia strawberry. And then sheep sorrel that I introduced. Although I think I, I might've had some elsewhere on the property because I love sheep sorrel. Uh, there's uh, bee balm, there's a meadow sweet, there's currant, there's myoga ginger. There's a good King Henry. That's a new artichoke. I keep planting artichokes, hoping I can keep them alive. Egyptian walking onion that I moved here from another place. I uh, put beans all in, in, in here. There are chives, more sorrel, potatoes. Like I said, I'm going to say potatoes every, everywhere. Um, there's a couple of uh, other quinces that I put in here so it could pollinate with that guy because I only had one flowering quince. This is my old apple tree. And it's uh, not gonna give me fruit this year because of the spring weather. All I see is the scab. I don't recall it going to flower. My early apples went to flower. They did not set any fruit. 
maybe because their flowers got affected also by the weather or the pollinators weren't out and this one didn't even bother to flower. So the only fruit I might get this year are cherries and medlars. I won't be surprised. There's an alligator lizard. I don't know if you saw him. This is the one variety I will mention in this video. This video is getting really long anyway. It's so early and it's so yummy and it's disease free. It's William's Pride. Number one tree I would recommend to get is William's Pride Apple. I think I showed it flowering in a previous video and uh, no fruits yet. It fruited last year. I love lupins in my guilds. I think there's garlic chives in that guild and uh, horseradish there or it's further down. There's a seaberry, comfrey, chicory, snowberry, silverberry, lovage, uh, living but miserable Asian pear and a dead Asian pear. And then a liberty apple, which is also good. Not as good as this one, but also disease free. A little bit later than this one, they can pollinate each other. They were both in flower. They could have pollinated each other this year. But yeah, too cold or no pollinators. Like I said, I'm going to fabric that end of it where there's a heavy thimble. And there are fireworks. Someone is testing out fireworks. So after I fabric down there, I'm going to finish fabricing here. And I'm going to I've also been maintaining this pathway and uh, I've been weeding in here. Look at this guy. This I can tell is an invasive, so he's going to die. <laughs> One good thing about having wood chips, among many things, is that you can easily impale a slug and toss him. So I just weeded out some buttercups that were in there. There's goldenrod, mining celery, go to flour, and what do you know, potatoes? There's a narrow leaf plantain. Most of my plantains are the broadleaf. There's cat mint on this side, strawberries. There's the quince, the new baby quince from this angle. There's mint in there. And there's also bindweed in there that jumped from this slope. So I could get fabric on that mint. I really don't care about the mint. The mint will survive. <laughs> And uh, this is a Crocosmia that I've probably either, well, the previous owners put in here, but I might have uh, divided, I kind of divide it and move it around. So all this green here is a uh, bindweed. I don't even want to show you the half of that terrace or that slope because it's um, depressing for me right now until I have my brush saw. And I finished down there and can move up here and just make that a dedicated thing. This is a twin berry that I put in. I have a cascara that I'm happy to see finally put on berries. All of my red huckleberries are volunteers. The previous owner must have put this in. It looks like um, some kind of Japanese yew or something. I don't know. So just here's the apple from this side. There's a beaked hazelnut in there. I did weed the bindweed here, but I didn't finish putting the fabric on, so it's coming back. So this is all going to be fabric around all of these plants that hopefully I can preserve. And uh, I'm going to come back to the spot from this other pathway. Did I show this guild? You know my fig guild. I have this in previous videos. Uh, this is the thing that I've shown too much, so I'm not going to go over it too much, but there's the potatoes. This is the Paul Gautry potatoes in there. This is a um, highly recommended um, plant that you let grow to weed, or get, I mean get weedy in your garden, which is a Henderson's Checker Mallow. This is about to go to flower. 
but um, so it's just getting a little too old. But um, at this stage, I'd still put this in a salad. It's just like a mallow. <laughs> what is a mallow? Here's an example of a plantain growing in a guild versus just outside of a guild. It's, it's not interesting. I guess that's, I don't know. The closer it is tucked in and getting shade, the happier it is. So I've got a honeysuckle. These strawberries have gotten huge, even though they're in basically full shade. They get a little bit of morning sun and that's it. And so the garlic are not big. Super spotlight plant. The Pacific water leaf, let this go weedy. It's edible. You can't eat it for too long because it goes to flower. And I don't like to eat it after it's flowered. But keep it in the shade and it'll take longer to flower. So you can eat it longer and it's uh, nice and happier. It's happier in the shade. There's a trillium. So these are native plants that didn't get torn up in the, during the terracing. So you see the inside out flowers. Um, I try to make this my ground cover, this or something edible. And this is a bitter cherry that I cut down and it has <laughs> regrown. This is a salmonberry that's trying to climb into the pathway. So I'm going to dig out the pathway salmonberry and put them probably on a slope for erosion and erosion control. This is an aronia. I like to keep my ferns if I can. I put the rose in, big hazelnut. I love the French cups that are, get weedy here. And there's celery that's re-sprouting here. I've planted into it a little bit, but it really needs more time to mature or to, to age. And I need to put poo, keep putting poo on it so the chips break down and it becomes a nice rich soil. This is like a berry island. I've put in a couple of blueberries in here. This is a volunteer salmonberry. I put in this gooseberry, and here's a volunteer gooseberry, and he it has to get moved. He is built for to be an outside the deer fence plant, because look at those spikes. I believe that's a black swamp gooseberry, and he will go crazy in here if I don't remove him and scratch me like crazy. So he is built for deers. He will go outside and I better do that before he gets too big. Everywhere I look, it's a new project and I can never focus on anything. Cornelian cherry here, comfrey, a new apple, one of the newer ones, cherry, and there's a couple of mulberries, another cherry, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. There's some carpet raspberry right on the other side of that carpet raspberry. It's going to be fabric from there all the way to the end and that side of the slope. You'll see that I'm not going to walk you along that fence edge because I'm just going to be like fabric, 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 fabric. Uh, look at all these buttercups that grew under my radar. It's just amazing. That's high priority. It needs to come out. Everything seems to be high priority. And so I think can get really finished. I think this is a regrowth of an apple that I cut down because it was, it had fallen over. It came with the house. It was growing like that. And it was like a green apple. It didn't taste all that great anyway, but I think it's a regrowth of that. But it hasn't fruited since regrowing. I can't be sure it's the same apple until it fruits. Oh my God. There's an apple right here. Can you believe that? Of all my apples that failed, this one apple that's never produced is gonna give me one apple. That's the one apple I'm gonna get this year. <laughs> and we'll see if it's that green apple I cut down years ago, or if it's some kind of rootstock apple. And look at that. That nasty bindweed growing right up it. This whole area is still gonna get wrapped in uh, fabric. It's just, I, I'm hoping I can preserve some plants in here. Like there's some echinacea or something I planted in here. That's gotta come out. This is a naking cherry. There's like about 10 of them in here. Apparently they don't fruit in Western Washington. So um, I guess they're just gonna be flowering shrubs for me until climate change happens. But hopefully things that are you know, like big anchor plants, I can just fabric around them. They can stay here. But these lilies, 
I'm just gonna pop them out and uh, move them so I can put fabric on them on that on those areas and uh, the ones that are growing in the apple they should really get moved anyway because it's growing right inside that tree this is another black hap in full sun not very happy in full sun this is not a luscious one it's gonna have berries but they're gonna be they're not going to be very juicy. They're going to be very seedy, is my prediction. It loves growing in shade. It wants to grow. It wants some sun, like most berries or any fruiting shrub. It, but it wants to be like an edge plant. It doesn't want to be in full sun. This is the current that I divided in one of my videos. I've got red elderberries volunteering everywhere, and a high bush cranberry. There, it's a giant one. There's a smaller one um, behind that, this Asian pear. And the idea is to feed the birds so that I can compete with them on eating my cherries. This is a cherry, that cherry has fruit on it. Uh, medlars, also fruit very early after planting them. Uh, not the best fruit, but it's probably more that I'm too lazy to process them properly. Uh, this is a uh, gooseberry that I planted. On this terrace, so this is an another Cornelian cherry. So there's an Asian pear. That's a tart cherry. They're easier to keep alive than the sweet ones. Uh, two apples and another Asian pear. I'm not going to go up there. This video is way too long. I mean, up there, if I go up there, what you're gonna see are, I'm gonna tell you that there are blueberries up there and some trees, but what you're gonna see <laughs> are thimbleberries, thistles, bracken ferns, black caps. And I'd be able to show you some uh, cranberry in there. Oh, there's grass. I pluck out grass and then it comes, if I don't get every single blade, it just respreads. But at least it's not the quack grass, it's uh, easier to manage grass. Yeah, so those are the plants that you would see. And also the blueberries are not very impressive. They've had some drought stress and also competition stress. Um, so there's a couple peaches, plum. These are plums too, one, two, and there's one outside the fence there. None of my plums have fruited and they're like my oldest trees. They're six years. Um, these ones came in a little bit later. They're, these three were five years old instead of six years old probably, but they don't fruit for me. And they're a combination of Asian and European. They might be too far apart, so there's a lesson for you. There's another medlar down there. There's a little baby persimmon. Maybe he'll fruit in 20 years if he ever grows. Another apple up there. Um, again, you can see that this black cap is weedy for me with the thimble. And these alders. I think I'll take you in here a little bit. you can see what I've been doing up here because I don't have bindweed on most of the slopes. It's going to be fabriced on the very end there. I've been, this is the place that I've been playing with because this doesn't have to be fabriced. So I've been trying to recreate like a prairie environment here. I'm not very successful in having plants form mats because of uh, competition from weeds. So I've brought in some topsoil here to keep it kind of sandier because I was wondering maybe it wants a sandier environment. I'm gonna send them die. I'm also taking advantage of the spaces in between the perennials before they mat and growing vegetables in them. So this is uh, making up my salads these days. And so I really wanna put poo in here, but I'm harvesting these now. So I'm uh, kind of torn. But this also, I could tell, has low nitrogen because of Look at these arugulas, you know, very unimpressive. They don't look like regular arugulas, right? Except for the flowers. So there's some um, nitrogen issues in here, which is not a shocker. The onions look okay, but even they could be. Look at that, see, you see, this is my life. I put a plant in, it's supposed to be a perennial, and then it dies. And I just have no idea what I did wrong. I feel better about 
weeding grass from flat areas and high in the slope. But on these edges, I'm more concerned because when, whenever I weed, more of the slope of the land drops off. And uh, so I feel like I have to replace them right away with more plants. So I should invest in money first. And I can't really chip it because when I, I do chip it, then the chips kind of just slide off as well. So I did things like, I have some sea kale in there, but um, you know, like a perennial veggie, that's a perfect place for perennial veggies, right? Salad, burnet, that kind of thing. So I'll probably put that more of that in here too. But yeah, I mean, that is itself its own project. I gotta get the plants. And I might even, now that I see thimble in here, I might even have to put fabric on it and then just plant into the fabric. So something like that. I mean, that's just like a full, it's just like from there to there. It's just like a full project. But if I don't take this quack grass out, it's going to respread. Do you know that you can tell it's quack grass if it has a little fold or wrinkle on the top of the leaf right there? Since I'm using my GoPro, you're probably not gonna see the wrinkle. Because this camera doesn't focus. It's right there. So there's a couple more projects that I want to show you. Oh, here's oregano. Actually, I guess it's like three projects. I would say this Hugo culture, this old Hugo culture is its own project. And actually there's another one that it still continues beyond here. That's how it looked before. And I just didn't get to that section yet. And this is it after. I put in really old squash and uh, melon seeds in here so that I don't expect to germinate. Also, the critters, um, looks like they took out the squash especially, but I also saw them eat some of the melons and uh, or cucumbers, whatever the heck is in there. And, uh, but, you know, I thought they stole the fava beans and they came up, so I, I don't know. At a minimum, I do expect beans that I put in here to come up. And that'll be fine if it's just beans. So I gotta continue on. So this is a, another project is to continue uh, hand weeding this so I can expose each guild, right? So you can see the guilds, the guilds and the areas that I've done, right? So there's that cherry. That cherry looked like that, looked like that uh, um, Asian pear not too long ago, but now you can see it's got clover, it's got the oregano. I guess it doesn't have a lot of guild plants. That one has the giant camas. This one has the yarrow. This one has the sorrel. This also has a giant camas. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong thing. This is the giant camas. So this is the third buttercup area that I need a weed ASAP before it drops its seed. And this is potato and garlic regrowth that I left over the winter that needs to be weeded somewhat. So what I've been doing is kind of what I did over there. That's the last thing I'm going to show you is I take the grass out. I mound it because I don't want to lose this material that I grew. It's organic matter. Yeah, so I'm piling it up and I'm going to chip this very, very thickly, um, at least a foot, possibly higher. And, uh, and then when that happens, I'm going to move the, cause I don't, I don't mound organic matter unless I'm mounding it on wood chips. Cause I don't want it to re-root in the ground. I want it, if it does re-root, I want it to do to, to do that in the wood chips so I can easily pull it. So, and right now it's not on wood chips. I'm gonna move it over to the wood chips and then weed in here. I'm trying to preserve all the clover because I love the clover. This will be the pathway between the potato, garlic. So it'll be like a clover wood chip pathway. And then this will be the grass mound here and then the hugo culture. So I have this uh, vision of things 
not too far behind that the comfrey is going to be fabric because that's where bindweed got in. I'm going to take a brush saw to all this. That used to be just dirt not too long ago. Uh, one last thing I want to point out about this slope is that I'm using the alders. There's a snake. There's a baby. I'm using the alders as hardy kiwi trellis. So those hardy kiwis climbing. And so I'll probably take down some of the alders and then leave the others that are going to be trellises. This one was on the ground, so I'm going to assign him an alder. I think I assigned him that alder. And, uh, and so this will probably have uh, the thick fabric. So when I'm trying to keep down shrubs like the thimble, that's going to take the heavy duty weed fabric. And if it's just bindweed, I'm going to see if I can, if the, that thin fabric that you saw, I'm going to see if that will work. There are um, a couple figs here. There's some scattered quack grass that's trying to fill out this whole area. So I got to pluck it. And then, so the last, <laughs> last, the la that's funny. The last project in this video that I'm mentioning in this video is um, I might, ideally I will whack this with the saw and then just cover it with fabric to kill it. Cause there's some nice juicy compost that I've been cooking up underneath all these weeds. And I suppose it's good. You can think of this as like a cover crop. It's been feeding the organisms living in the pile, bacteria. Future state, so next tour, hopefully this will have fabric on it. Oh, there's a rhubarb in that guild. And uh, all of this needs to, this is, this is actually another grass mound that also will be whacked and covered. And when that dies, these plants on top dies, what I'm likely to do is, if I think everything is dead underneath, I'm gonna take the organic material and probably move it around the trees as like a fertilizer, I take it. So that's the top of the fence, there's that big rock. And I'm not gonna go up there until I can whack it for you. So that's it for today. This super quick video turned into a long rant. Um, but now I don't have to do a big tour for a while. I'm hoping in future videos that I will just bring you on to an individual project and show you something once I've accomplished it. And then maybe I can focus in on the plants in that area more in depth. It turned into, let me talk about some of my projects, a lot of my projects. I still have projects outside the fence as well. So I can't get anything done. I think the main takeaway here is think about the labor that you have and the area that you have. Don't try to tackle too much area um, for the amount of humans that you have working that area. Anyway, um, that's it. And see you next time. And there's a couple of mulberries, another cherry, and uh, Yeah, I think that's it.